and the sexy thigh gap, it's all about sexual dimorphism of the human pelvis for, part urition, nulliparity, bipedalism, maternal fetal presentation, waist to hip ratio, body mass index and sexual selection. The thigh gap is a secondary sexual characteristic with phenotypic advantage in certain environments. Presented by the leading ED treatment for the excessive dishonesty and delusion of society. Sexual dimorphism of the human pelvis is linked to adaptive functions, especially bipedalism and part urition. It is a phenotypic differentiation between men and women, and a secondary sexual characteristic. For our ancestors, a mismatched maternal fetal presentation was often fatal to both the mother and child. Perpetual brain expansion is a consequence of both natural and cultural evolution, and the woman's pelvis is reshaping itself accordingly. The so-called thigh gap is due to the pelvic shape, and may be more or less prominent in some ethnic groups. In light of the plethora of maternal injuries associated with childbirth, it is easy for one to postulate that in the absence of modern health care, incompatible pelvic fetal anatomy could result in significant infant and maternal morbidity and that the thigh gap might have been an indicator of reproductive success, especially in smaller framed or petite women, or where nulliparous mating occurs. The divergent selective forces shaping the pelvis arose because of the growth of the human brain. The pelvis has to re-sculpt itself repeatedly to accommodate fetal cranial size arising from natural and cultural evolution. Any discussion of the thigh gap, reveals typical Western media hysteria focused on body mass. Admittedly, the pelvic morphology is most apparent in relation to body fat distribution as measured by the waist-to-hip ratio. The waist-to-hip ratio is independent of overall body weight and an accurate predictor of risk for various diseases. Healthy women have a greater propensity to possess rounder hips and a lower waist-to-hip ratio compared to men. Numerous differences in pelvic shape occur. One difference is the pubic arch and subpubic angle, which is more V-shaped in men, and about 30 degrees narrower. Women with smaller frames typically have a proportionally larger pelvic width. Asian women often have very visible thigh gaps, and wide pelvic structures, which can be easily seen, almost irrespective of waist-to-hip ratio. Men may find the thigh gap sexually appealing, especially in ethnic groups where the thigh gap is most apparent. It may also be an adaptation geared to avoiding mismatched maternal-fetal presentation. Ethnic groups with smaller overall bone structure may have a disproportionately larger pelvic width to facilitate childbirth with fewer adverse outcomes. However, running speed and other locomotion factors are more impaired. Asian media and fashion styles are presented very differently than in the West, although Western influences are forcing change. In the Far East, it is common to see women with obvious thigh gaps and minimal breast development, including models in Asian fashion catalogs. Dating and marriage is more restricted with most brides being virgins, with a dowry given based on her social and educational status. Where mating is focused on nulliparous brides, a pelvis optimized for childbirth would be preferable to one optimized for locomotion. Steatopygia is a classic example of a regional female characteristic with a clear survival advantage. Steatopygia is a specialized fat accumulation around the buttocks. Steatopygia is a widespread genetic trait of the Khoisan and other African women, and is often accompanied by the formation of elongated labia minora which some men find sexually attractive. Steatopygia had clear survival advantages in the physical environment in which it arose in Africa. Accordingly, steatopygia became a secondary sexual characteristic of attractiveness to men in that region. In many Western and African cultures, the multi women is idealized 
including larger total hip and breast size. The Western dating practice of serial hypergamy contrasts with restrictive dating practices. In Western culture, extra pair copulation is frequent and most evident during estrus, which resulted in a dual reproductive strategy, the effects of which are seen throughout the world today. Males in this mating scenario would cue more for signs of estrus and less towards nulliparity or pelvic width. This commentary is presented as is, and is not professional or medical advice or opinion.